Welcome to our first of four, uh, from start to finish, get that grant. Because hopefully, we want you guys to get that grant. <laughs> um, my name is Jenna Momozo. I am the grant administrator for Staten Island Arts. Uh, thank you all for being here today. Like I said, this is a series of one of four. Um, our goal, this is my third year here at Staten Island Arts, and we're trying a new thing. This is new for us. Um, basically, we do a lot of technical assistance one-on-one. -on -one. This four-part workshop series is so we have to, we can hit you all at once. Because a lot of you have the same similar questions, even though your projects are probably all very different. Um, in regards to our grant applications, though, um, we all kind of ask the same questions, so we're going to try this in a group setting and see how it goes. Um, we have some workshop uh, evaluation surveys which we'd like you to fill out at the end, so please don't leave without filling one out. Um, today, the first part is a panel process. Um, we've asked some of our successful grantees to come here today to talk about their projects. Um, I have a couple questions I'm going to ask them, but we'll also open up the floor for you guys to ask your questions of them, of me, um, and yeah, that's about it. Do we have any questions before we start? All right, good. I like, I like no questions before we start. Um, I'd like to be this is to be as conversational as possible, so feel free if you'd like to raise your hand and jump in and, and ask questions and talk as we go. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm going to intro our panelists today. So starting right here, we have Roger Rajaswari. Um, and I guess, actually, you know, you guys introduce yourselves, but they all, all are successful grantees who have gotten funding from us in the past. Good evening. How is everybody today? Really good. Good evening. Thank you. Glad that you can be here. My name is Raja, as Jenna said. I have performed with uh, our Arts Council, which is known as COSI for over 10 years now. I've uh, successfully applied, been granted over 12 maybe over 10 years. And each year um, I've been really, really um, felt very grateful that the grant, uh, that the panel would give me a grant so it would help me pursue my dreams. I teach Indian classical dance and over the years it's progressed from Indian classical dance to varying styles of dance expression. And without the Arts Council here in Staten Island helping us artists, many of us are very talented. About. It's the funding that's crucial, it's the grant that's crucial. So what you guys are doing here is the first great step to getting your grant. I hope to see all of you in the future. The stuff in there, and I think this was a great idea by Jenna to start with us in our panel. And I will turn it over to Beth. Thank you. Uh, welcome. My name is Beth Gorey. I run a community reading, dialogue, and performance project called Staten Island Out Loud, and if you haven't given a brochure, been given a brochure, I'm going to hit you up very soon. Uh, we, we are in our 13th year. Uh, we didn't apply for COSI grants for the first couple years, so I think we're in year 10 now. And uh, like I agree with Raja, I am so grateful to Staten Island Arts, or formerly COSI as it was known, for its support. Uh, COSI incubated us and gave us tremendous help as we were getting established and, and has been instrumental in helping us grow, so thank you. Um, and uh, very happy to share information on, or tips or personal experience on what to do and what not to do. Larissa. Thank you, hi everyone. My name is Larissa Shiano. Um, I have been granted two grants from, um, first from Council of the Arts. I'm actually a newer artist. I've been, when did I start? I think I started in 2012 is when I first applied and I got a, a premier grant. And uh, it's really because of COSI and Staten Island Arts that I've actually been able to like, really follow my dreams and do the things that I've really always wanted to do. I have a dance company that I work on, um, that I have, and the project that we're currently working on is I'm working in a Cold Lakes nursing home, and we're actually doing dance and movement projects with them, and we're telling the stories of their lives through dance and movement. So um, I must say, like, out of all of the genres, dance was always something that was really underserved. So it feels really wonderful to see that so many people are really interested in seeing dance happen, and I'm just thankful for Staten Island Arts for believing in it and allowing it to really be accessible to everyone. But I'm so happy to be here to share any points, just as Beth was saying, any tips, and give you my own personal experience as a, as a help for you to kind of help you build your grant application. Because I remember when I first started, like, where do I start, what do I do? You know, and like that nervous feeling, but you just know there's something that you want to share with everyone, but it's just like I need the tools on how to do it. So I'm happy to be here to help you with that. Great, and so thank you guys. So on our end, um, why we specifically picked these folks to come talk to you guys, um, I'll give you a little info on that. So Roger here, she is A, a, dan a dancer, which is an underserved discipline for, our, for us, and also she works in traditional cultural practices by doing Indian dance. Uh, Beth is a nonprofit. 
Uh, she does over 50 events a year sometimes, so uh, she speaks in the nonprofit realm. And Larissa, I specifically picked because she got a grant, didn't get a grant, and then came back and got a grant again. Because let me tell you, people hear no from us and they do not return. And I'm here to, and Larissa is a prime example of why you should never give up and always come back. Okay, so that's why we asked these three ladies to sit here today. So we're gonna start, uh, the couple, first couple questions I have you guys can jump in on. I have some specific questions for you, but the first question I have is, uh, which Larissa almost kind of talked about, was uh, what information you guys get together when you're writing your application, and please be as specific as you'd like or not like, um, but what kind of stuff you start to gather when you're filling out your applications? You start with Rachel. Okay. Obviously, the first thing you need to do is figure out the project in your head. What, whatever discipline is, you're a dancer like me, you're an artist, you're a performer, you're a presenter, you're a sculptor. First, you have to get that idea in your head. Then the most challenging thing, I think, is for an artist to put it down on paper. Okay, we've all been there. I mean, you can have the most creative ideas, but you can't actually put it down on paper. So somebody who is not a dancer or not a sculptor who reads it in the panel, then it's all you know, French and Latin to them. So the idea is to get the idea down in your head and then put it into clear, concise, simple language. In my other life, I'm also an attorney. I'm an assistant DA in the Staten Island DA's office. I can tell you I try, I try cases, I speak for a living. The simpler language is the better language. Cut to the chase, keep it very short, very precise, very clear. Don't overestimate what the difficulties are gonna be because some of them are gonna be challenging. But don't underestimate your skills. Be confident with <coughs> it, do a draft, and then give it to a person who is not in your discipline. Because that's who the panelists are. Panelists are very talented people but not necessarily in your discipline. And see how it reads to a friend. And if they can understand where you're going, you get the clear concept, then comes all the other parts about you know filling out the forms, check the deadline application, you know, get your support recommendation letters, get everything else. But the thing that the engine that drives your grant is your idea. It has to be unique, it has to be creative, it has to tell the Staten Island art community what you can bring, something new, something exciting. Okay, so do a few different drafts, have somebody read it, and don't be afraid to go back and read it. Back. I agree with everything Raja mm -hmm. said. Uh, sometimes it's, it's hard, you're looking at a blank piece of paper. In this case, it's a blank computer screen because it's an online application. Right. Start with That's the true. easy stuff. Your name, you've got that <laughs> down, your address phone, and, and look up your New York City Council District, your uh, Assembly and New York State Senate District, all those little picky things that are essential. Your application will bounce if you don't have it. But that gives you a sense of accomplishment. You've got that first page done. Okay, now I can move on to page two or whatever. It, it helps you get the thing going. Uh, your work sample. Um, that's important. That's a big portion of the score that the panelists are going to give you, which determines whether you are awarded a grant or not. So start on that now. Start on that now. If you have it, bravo. You've got it. Send it off to Staten Island. I'm going to keep saying Coasty and Staten Island Art. The same company. Yeah. They're the okay. same thing. The same thing. Uh, get get that off now because that can be a kind of um, a kind of psychological impediment in some people's mm -hmm. minds. So get that going. Uh, similarly, the budget. Budget takes time. It's nitpicky. It can intimidate some people. It needn't be. And I'll be talking a little bit more about how this form is really very user friendly, but it's intimidating to people. And it, it doesn't get easier. I, I'm in my 10th year and it doesn't get easier. But start the budget. Just just give yourselves uh, the, the aggregate numbers. Uh, $500 for mailing, $600 for printing. You, you're gonna adjust those numbers, but you get something down on paper or on your screen. That, that helps you get a sense of momentum. Well, you two covered it very well. Um, Definitely what, um, what Beth says as well, like filling in the information that's really easy to find, um, that does give you that sense of accomplishment. Because I know every time that I do fill out the grant, that those are the first things that I normally do. I fill out all the information that I have like on hand and I put that into the application. But I'm kind of building off of what Raja was saying with the project description. Um, I found with myself just really being able, once you do get it concrete with simple languaging, that you could actually visualize this project, that you could actually see it happen 
and you really have like the groundwork for it that you could actually see it. And then with the budget coming into play, just playing it out piece by piece, writing everything down, saying, okay, well, and even if it's a roundabout average, like this would cost this much money, which Beth and Roger already spoke to. But um, as well as the work sample, the work sample really speaks to the project description. So I know for me, I'm gonna just speak from personal experience, in my first grant when I applied for it, um, it was my first time, so it was like a little different, my project description, compared to the third time that I applied, because it was a more specific project. The more specific the work sample is, that kind of speaks to what your project is, it gives you a better, clear understanding of your capability, your abilities as an artist, and what you can create. The work sample does not have to be exactly what you're proposing to get funded, but you want it to show that this work sample shows that I could do this project, and you want the two to really link. So that when they see that, they're like, yeah, this is Kate, this is this could definitely be made. And I found that that really worked for me when I started getting more specific with my languaging in my project description, as well as really tailoring my work sample to really show my abilities as an artist and let them really complement each other. I found, and I felt more confident about it when I watched it. Like I, I read and I was like, yeah, this makes sense. This actually works. And I find that really helped me with my application. Great, that actually leads to my next question, which was, what do your work samples look like? Mm. Um, and like what maybe, and especially if you guys have, especially for Raja and for Beth, who do reoccurring programming, because literally you're kind of in like your second time of doing it. Yeah. But if you do are doing reoccurring projects, because uh, you said like 10, 12 years, and you've been a, a grantee for a while, um, what are some things that you might do, do differently in your applications, just to show a change, or to show some growth, or things like that? Would you mind speaking to those things? Sure. Um, what Beth said about the work sample absolutely correct. That's probably the most important visual. They say, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words, a video is worth a million words, right? This is the first time the panel is going to see you and your art form. So the impact has to be great. The other thing that uh, we had said here is whatever work sample you do, let's say you're doing an improv for family or you're trying out something new or it's a creative idea, record it. Take pictures, take videos, take recordings, and don't be afraid to look at different work samples. Um, one of the questions was, I've been doing this for about 10 years, how has my work sample changed? I don't remember what my first work sample looked like. I've been a teacher and a dancer for many, many, many years, but I would like to think it's improved over the years, it's gotten more refined and more creative, but one of the things that I'm able to do is when I do my performance or my interactive segments, I interact with the audience, for example. I teach them different hand gestures. The audience get to enjoy, they get to participate in. If there is an interactive segment, take a snapshot of that, take a video of that, and incorporate it, because it just shows that you're getting the audience involved. If it's an artist, if it's a painter, right? Take it in different work samples, in different light notes, <coughs> in different creative ways, and they give you a lot of leeway in different ways to submit it, right? Mm -hmm. so, don't be afraid to try a few different things and see which, which media, for instance, portrays it the best. Okay, so be creative, try it out, and always, that's what friends and family are for. Bore them with all the details. Show it to them, because they can be your best sounding board. You know what I mean? Before it goes to the panel. And, and try it out. Okay, art is all about not just their creativity, but also getting them. It's a process, constantly. So show it be creative and tinker with it, don't worry. And uh, I found that the Art Council, the, for the, is there any first time applicants here? Okay, like Beth said, the details, the devil's in the details, you gotta check off every single thing and fix them. But they do realize the premier grantees for the first time, with the work sample, with the stuff, and that they are very, very creative, good panelists who sit and watch them. So don't be afraid if you don't think it's perfect, but still give it your best shot. Uh, I agree. We're, we're just going to keep saying I yeah. agree. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that we agree because it's good information. Um, I, I can just give you a, a window into uh, our evolution of work samples. Mm -hmm. Our first grant application was maybe 2003, when uh, technology has changed yeah. remarkably. It's unrecognizable what's available to every Tom, Dick, and Harry or Tanya, Diana, and <laughs> Henrietta. <laughs> These days, you, you can do things with your cell phone that were, uh, it was unthinkable 10 or more years ago. Our first uh, work sample, and I, I mentioned that we, we progressed for a couple years without applying for a grant. Our first work sample was simply photographs of events with descriptive captions, and it was like a little storybook. 
Now you would do this with a slideshow, a digital slideshow with captions. Uh, if you can take a, a cell phone video, it, it, what Roger said is absolutely right. They, for, for first time grantees, they do not expect a Steven Spielberg mm -hmm. production, right. but, <laughs> but make clarity is important. Yeah. So uh, have something simple but clear and good. So if it's a slideshow, I think that's fine. If you're a dancer, I imagine, or, or a, a musician, I would imagine they need to see you in motion, so a video is important, but people can do this now. There, there are free programs and, and everybody's got a cell phone, so that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, we, 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 I wanted to have, as we progressed a little bit, and I had a, a little money to play with, I thought, we're gonna get a slamming work product, <laughs> a work sample. So I hired a videographer who did, a, and we had a really beautiful production, and she filmed it, and I had an hour-long video. Um, but of course, the work sample has to be about what three minutes. Uh, you can submit five, five, five minutes. Five, five minutes. minutes. Yeah. Five minutes. Yeah. But you got to make those two first two minutes really yeah. good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So I, I thought, okay, well, we'll just we're a reading program that's principled. There was there was dance, there was music, there was a beautiful uh, historic site. I thought, well, the really the important thing is to hear somebody reading. So that's what I provided that sample, and uh, we got the grant. But the uh, afterwards, when I got the panelist notes, more on that later. Uh, they said, your work sample really sucked. And I said, what? <laughs> Do you know what I spent on that thing? Well, it was because of what I showed them to demonstrate what we do, the core of what we did, it was kind of static. Okay, back to the drawing board. And, and we, we ended up going with, with future videos that were much simpler. And then finally we got a couple news feature videos. And those are, those are little mini three minute films that are nicely produced. And that's what I am using now. We'll have to we'll have to change that up sometime very soon. But uh, <laughs> okay, I take her advice. <laughs> um, that, that, yeah, my point is simply that you keep it simple. Don't think about spending a lot of money because I'm telling you, it ain't going to help you. And, and it, you just tell your story clearly. Mm -hmm. um, I would also see, say be very flexible with it. Um, sometimes as an artist you have a very specific idea that you have to create and if it's not that you, you get like very frustrated. So um, I know that happened to me in the first work sample I was doing. I just, I kept doing it over and over again and it just wasn't right. But then I said, you know what, let me drop that and let me just do like the highlights of my best work and I'm just gonna submit it. So I gave like little pieces of different dance, my dance choreography. And I did that and I submitted it. And it was really so much simpler than what I thought in my mind of what it should be. But I, it was just very clear and concise and direct and it spoke to the project description. On um, my last work sample that I did, it really connected to my project. So because that, that time I had an opportunity to create that. Because the first time as a premier, as doing a premiere grant, they don't know who I am. They have no idea of what I'm doing. So I said to myself, how could whoever's watching this like really see me for who I am as an artist when they watch like the first minute or two? As Jenna said before, you want to pull them in for those first two minutes. Because I've sat on a panel as well, and you know, like you, you see how different people do their work samples, and you see which ones are the most effective and which ones aren't. You know, and I found the ones that I know I was a yes for with the application were the ones that were that pulled me in, in the very beginning. So I think that's really key when you are making your work sample that it's very intriguing from the very beginning, and then it does really show your best work. But at the same time, don't be so concerned with the fact that maybe the video has to be super clear or things like that. Like as Beth was saying, it doesn't have to be like super quality. Just as long as when you watch it, it really gives a clear distinction of what you're able to do and what you could really share with the world. And how people, when they see it, really shows them who you are. Because all they have, they don't know you. They have no idea who you are. All they have is this piece of paper, well actually on the screen, an application and they have your work sample. So when you're really sitting down to do your application, like how could I really allow myself to be seen through my work and, and, and really allow it to speak to them? And that's what you really want to get across with your work sample and your application. And I found that that's been really effective for me. And you could perhaps have a little narration. Sure. Here's, here's the program we did on April 4th at the XYZ location. Mm -hmm. 30 people attended and they said, Right. We loved it, and here's here's what we did. Yeah, very simple and straightforward. Simple. But it tells a story. Keep it simple, stupid. 
<laughs> That's always, I remember in college, my, right, my teachers, keep it, I used to write these big stories. Keep it simple, stupid, and, when I, and then I'd get an A. I'm like, all right, that works. It's true, very simple, clear, concise, and to the point. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. All good advice. Um, so now we're gonna get into some specific questions. Uh, so start with Larissa. Um, you received a grant, and then the next year you were denied a grant, mm -hmm. and then you came back stronger and you got the grant again. Could you talk a little bit about like that experience of like getting a premier grant and then getting denied, then coming back sure. and getting the R one grant? And I'm gonna try to keep it as clear and, and yeah. specific <laughs> with my with my language. So the first year, I applied for the premier grant, and as I said, it was a project. It was called Conversation Pieces: Moments in Time. It was just basically. Um, me presenting myself as a modern dance choreographer. So me just creating a brand new work. I created seven pieces and um, I, with my dance company. And I had a work sample that really showed the capabilities of myself as a choreographer and my dancers. And I got a, I got a nice grant for that. My second grant, I didn't spend as much time preparing it. I was involved with my yoga teacher training and I was all over the place and I did it like last minute. Like it was kind of like me throwing something together. And you obviously saw it in the idea of the, of the grant as well as my work sample. When I read, when I go back and I read what I put for the for my second grant, it's not direct, it's all over the place, you can't really visualize it. And I said, oh, that's why I got, I didn't get funded. But I knew I was able to do it. I'm the type of person that if I get a no, how do I get a yes? So Monica and Jenner were key to helping me, key. When the next time came around, I was like, you know what, let me, because they are here to help you. They are two resources that you want to utilize. They're key. They, they helped me so much. And I got an even bigger grant my second time around. Um, and the project that I'm doing now, um, the work sample spoke to the project, as well as my project really spoke to a specific population, which I think is very key to think about. Like really touching to a specific population, how it could affect the community, how would the community respond to what you're doing, and really thinking about that. So my, my third, the second grant that I got, it really spoke to a, a specific population. It portrayed my capabilities as a, as a dancer and, and even like outreach work that I could do. And um, it was very, it was much more clear and concise. The second time that I did it, um, it was it just was all over the place. It didn't really make sense. The work sample, it was very conceptual, and it didn't really make sense. Like you know, but when I came around the third time, I just made it very direct, clear, and I, I did something very specific, and uh, and it worked. So I find that that's what I did. I took, and I, it was because of you and Monica, really. You guys, I met with them, we sat, they helped me like really create a strong, strong description. So you have to utilize them because that's what they're here for. So Beth also touched on that. When you got denied, you called and asked for feedback. Yes, I did. So again, if you get a no, the panel of feedback is yours. It's yours to take. It's yours to take to be better. Because like Rosa said, I got a no, how do I get a yes? So if you're really into this and you really want the yes, you get the no, don't think that it's us blowing you off or that you're not good enough to get it. You are good enough to get it. Nobody's perfect though, right? Nobody's you perfect. You can't take it personal. Yeah, it's not, it personal. it's not personal. It's more about like your project and the work that you presented. You get the feedback from them and then you just shift it. And when you approach it from that sort of energy, it will come back to you in that same way. And if you get a yes, call them up and ask for feedback. Yes. yes. Because yeah. you'll find out what you did right and if there were any infirmities, sure. uh, you'll find out what you could what you can improve for the next year. Right. Again, with, and with pan, I mean, they keep saying panel. If you're not familiar, Monica and I do not decide the grant. <coughs> we collect community members and we bring them in together in a room, and they are they read all your applications and they hash it out. I'm there to make sure they're fed and that they're happy and that they're not they are not too hot, not too cold, that they're well fed and all that stuff. <laughs> so that's really my job. I facilitate. We do not decide the grant program, which is why it's our job to make sure that you have the best application moving forward, which is why we provide feedback and we provide this, things like this, this workshop, things like our grant application workshops to answer all your questions and hold your hand through the whole process to get you to where you need to be. So panel feedback is always important. Because again, no, they don't uh, assume that they do not know anything about you, that they don't, mm -hmm. they don't know you, they're not, even if you've been doing art here for 50 years, doesn't matter, assume they do not know who you are. Because uh, that's the best way to go into it. Okay. And and, and uh, yes. So anyone? Marissa saying she was on a panel. Anyone can sign up to be a panelist. Um, yeah, they talk to me. <laughs> so if you'd like to serve on a panel too, um, it's a good experience to see other projects mm -hmm. and how they're presented. Yes. And when you hear us say how great Monica and Jenna are you'll know we're not kissing up because they can't no. do a thing for no. you once your application <laughs> is no. submitted. Yeah. So it's sincere. They help you on the front end and they help you on the back end. They can't help you get the grant. Question. What's the application schedule? What do you mean? The deadline? 
the deadline. Oh, sure. Ready. So Grant will be uh, released uh, Friday, tomorrow, uh, yeah. probably in the, uh, probably after work. So I'm, I'm going to do it in the evening, so it'll probably be released tomorrow night. <coughs> uh, and then the deadline is October 24th. So the firm I'm deadline. Sorry, what are you releasing? <laughs> the application, they're all, they're all online. <laughs> so uh, in order to apply for the program grants, which I have here, so if you, as a first-time applicant, you are required to attend an application workshop. I do them all over Staten Island. I'm doing seven this year. So you have to go to one of this. This does not count as that. At this application workshop, I go through our entire application. And it shows you how to get onto our online system. It shows you how to log in, create a profile, and then I go through each question. And it's really for you guys that you can come and ask. We can talk specifically about your projects. And you can ask me questions as you go through it in a PowerPoint presentation. And we'll go through each question. And I'll go through exactly what you need to have and how you need to answer things, et cetera. So you have to come, as a first time applicant, you have to come to one, mm -hmm. one of these seven workshops. Yes? When is the next one? The first one is Wednesday, September 10th, uh, at the Conference House, which is a little far. Again, I, we service all of Staten Island, so I do them as far as the Conference House, and I will do it, I think the closest one uh, will be Stapleton Library. Uh, but we do, I do them all over. So again, one, you can come to one of these, whatever fits into your schedule. Most of them seem to be on Wednesdays and Saturdays, but that was not planned, it just happened that way. Um, but you, I have copies here for you to take with you. I specifically go over the DCA Premier Grant, but I am there to answer questions about all the other grant programs that we offer. So even if you're not a first time applicant and you'd like to come ask questions, please come and ask questions. Did I answer your question? Great. I have these, we'll hand them out. Um, thank you, Larissa, for your No, uh, Raja, your projects are based in traditional cultural practices. Does that affect how you write your grant? Um, and do you have any advice for people that are working in the folk arts when they are applying for grants? How do you communicate like, cultural significance and things of that nature, knowing that the panel may not be familiar with your specific cultural practice? Right. So, like uh, we've, all, we've been saying so far, and Beth has been saying, the panelists are comprised of the community of Staten Island. They are obviously interested in arts and fostering our arts and culture. That's the great question because like myself, there are a lot of traditional artists who want to portray. Nobody has any idea what it means. So how do you impress the panelists mm -hmm. to get through your art and do it? You have to, through words, paint a picture. That's why it's clear <coughs> when you do it with your yes. work sample, because it's through a video, it's through a photograph. But what you try to do when you're trying to represent a traditional art or long forgotten art or something from outside the normal cultural scene is you explain what the significance of your art is. And that's not enough because, okay, the art is great. It's wonderful tradition from 3,000 years in India. How does that help me in Staten Island? You see what I mean? You have to connect it to the people here. How do you affect the community here? How do you connect it? You connect it by showing through art, we reach everybody. Okay, through art, we connect. Through art, we communicate. It doesn't matter if you're from Africa or India or where you are from, the language of art and dance is universal. You can portray a story without words, without language. You can communicate, you can get community involved. So you have to bridge that gap. Not just say, let's say, I'm gonna do Peruvian folk arts. It's wonderful. How does that relate to Staten Island? Because that's one of the premier questions. If you're a painter, yes, I love painting beautiful stuff. Great. What does that have to do with enhancing the Staten Island cultural community? Then you get to mention, like, uh, like we said, dance is one of the underserved disciplines. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different underserved disciplines. Through your art, you're hoping to reach people. Mm -hmm. You're hoping to enlighten. You're hoping to bring communities together. We learn about other cultures and other communities. You foster understanding. You foster understanding, acceptance of other cultures. You see where I'm going? It's just not a dance. It's to bring people together. So you have to try to put significance of your art as to how it connects to Staten Island. Otherwise, it's just... It's wonderful, but what does it have to do with the cultural development of Staten Island? Okay, so read the questions very carefully, and my fellow panelists were not overstating it. They are amazing, right? Jenna will call, I called her still, after doing it for 10 years. Uh, Jenna, this is grand. Uh, no question is too big or too small. They are amazing. So call, ask questions, because it's better you know the stuff you're doing right or wrong now, then, of course, feedback is important when you get rejected, but the goal of these workshops is you don't get rejected. Mm -hmm. We see you at the award ceremony with the rest of the art. All right? Okay. So go through them. Could you just give an example of how you connect to the community? Like I said, how do I connect to the community? Through my dance. A lot of my dances that have evolved over the years are not traditional anymore. We do East meets West. I thought it's a great concept, right? Because as great as all the Eastern cultures and dances are, 
we don't understand the language, right? Uh, dance connects it. A few years ago, I had come up with this concept of East meets West, and we had taken very popular songs from Disney, from movies, that everybody knows and everybody will come to, and try to choreograph it through traditional dance. But the goal is to keep the dance pure, but at the same time make it mixed, so it doesn't look like it's not mixing. And when we put that on, of course I was nervous, the entire audience started humming the tune because they know the song. But we're explaining it through dance to show how different cultures can actually enhance rather than have us compete. Right? We live in a country and a culture where there's so many different religious wars, there's so much uh, unnecessary fighting. If you actually understand other cultures and see that we are more in similar than we have you know, dissimilar uh, features, it can help community come together. So we have people, in my audience, I'm very blessed, it's usually from everywhere. We had everybody actually singing the same song and watching Indian classical dance. But they learned so much about something they did not know. In the last performance I did, I explained the significance of the bindi, and I had given one to all the audience. So a lady came to me and said, are you coming back next week? Am I going to get a different one? I said, you got to talk to John. You have to do more. I need more funding to do this. This is more expensive. We can't do that. But you, you connect to your community and your audience. They can teach you, and you can teach them. But it's the idea of bringing them together. Right? Otherwise, it's just a recreational dance, and that's not what we're looking for. We're looking to impact the community. So in your own discipline, you have to see how that will connect to the community and bring people. I just want to touch on something too that Raj said, underserved disciplines. Yes. Um, every year we go back and we look at <coughs> art disciplines that we either aren't serving or just haven't been applying often, so every year they change. This year uh, we have four underserved disciplines that we're serving this year. What that means is when we, we pull a panel together, we ask panelists to specifically look, <coughs> take a second chance on these guys because we aren't necessarily funding them in, in large ways. We want to fund them in large ways. So this year our underserved disciplines are <coughs> literature, um, that could be book printing, book signings, uh, magazines, things like that. So literature, uh, 3D, 3D installation, digital art, new media, um, folk art, and uh, what was that last one? I the last one. Literature. It'll come. I think, I think sculpture and 3D digital art. Are right. Two, are two separate yes. Things. Yes. 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 Exactly. So those are yes. Um, new media, does that fall under the um, guidelines as on production or non-for-profit non, non productions? Or? Uh, it depends on what you're producing. It depends on what you're producing. So new media, I guess, would be digital, like video, like not yeah. film work, but video, did, like video artwork. Video artwork. Yes. Uh, yeah, exactly. So that would be like something we would consider new media. Not like I'm making a film that's a narrative piece. That, that's not new media, if that makes any sense. So if anyone goes to the Lumen, right, so documentaries is not new media. But if anyone's been to the Lumen Festival, the video projections and stuff that you see at Lumen, those are new media. That's what we would consider new media, okay? Uh, but those are, again, I can talk about those in the application workshops, uh, which I will, again, you'll, you'll be attending if you're a first time applicant. Um, thank you, Rob, for your very, very astute answer. Um, Beth, you're up next. Uh, your, your grant funded projects take place all over Staten Island, you use many different venues and you work with many different people and artists. Can you talk a little bit about how to do that <laughs> and, what, and what the experience of doing all that work? Yes, yes. Well, it's a lot of fun. We, we do, we do um, I think, a minimum of four to six events a month and some months we do eight, ten events a month. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And getting all that, when you, if you haven't done an application before, you're going to see it. It's a little space word character limitations. Yeah. So it's a lot of information to pack into a little space. Um, so for that, and, and this is my advice, no matter what you're doing, uh, let me just, before I say what the advice is, let me just ask you a question and ask a favor. If you've ever procrastinated just a little bit, would you raise your hand? And my hand's going up first. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh. yes, we've all done it. We've all done it. We've all done it. And we've all done it. Larissa talked about putting it off to the last minute. Oh my don't. God. Oh no, yeah, don't. No, we've all been there. It's the worst thing we've it's ever terrible. done. It's miserable. It's a horrible experience. It's a terrible feeling. Yes, it's a terrible feeling. Mm -hmm. It's a terrible feeling. So our mothers said start early and plan ahead. Do it. Do it. You're in the catbird seat. You are f what? Five weeks? Six yep. weeks ahead of twenty fourth, twenty fifth, twenty fifth, twenty fifth. Oh my God! Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's thirty one so many, days. Almost whatever. Almost whatever. Almost. <laughs> whatever. <It's great. laughs> I'm not a CPA. Uh, uh, so so this is great. Tonight, 
go home and just, like I said, look up your uh, council district, your assembly district, your senate district, and, and write out just four sentences on your artist statement, your, your program description. Um, it takes, I allow about 100 hours to get the application done. I'm not kidding. And I've done it plenty of times. It's the, the shorter, shorter, this is a user-friendly application, mm -hmm. but it's, a, what, am, I, am I right? Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. If, if five weeks allow 20 hours out of, a week to do, do it, set a deadline ahead of the hard deadline. So if the deadline is October 25th, tell yourself, I'm gonna have this sucker ready by October 19th. Yep. Why? Because it will give you a few days to circulate it to people who know nothing about your work, your college roommate that you have, wh whatever. Um, and, and it will allow you to circulate it to an artist friend who maybe is a little more seasoned in the art of uh, grant application. And to go to Jenna and and um, um, Monica, sorry, stop, Monica, <laughs> um, to to get there. Make your appointment with them now. Right. They get and busy at the application. They, they, yes, mm -hmm. yes. So don't make your don't call them up on October nineteenth and say, do you have some time for me? Clarissa oh, already hit us up for our appointment. Yes, I did. I emailed back about it. Oh, you there did. Okay, Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, you did. Yeah, on Tuesday. Okay. Check your email. I know. <laughs> but Clarissa already made an appointment with me and Monica about it. Yep. <laughs> good. Okay. Good. okay. She is. I'm like, I'm gonna see. I learned. Yeah. I learned. Yeah. So that's what yeah. it yeah. is. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Your support letters, your letters of commitment. Yep. That takes time. You don't want to be the person who calls the parks department and says, um, I'm really sorry, but I need a letter today because right. I'd like to do something at the Greenbelt Nature Center next May. Do it now. They'll, they'll accommodate you, but if you wait until close to the deadline, your priority is not their priority. People forget, people mess up, so get that all done. That, that takes a lot of time. Um, and then also, when you meet that uh, that internal deadline of October 19th. Take the application after you've distributed it to your friends who are going to proof it and, and uh, provide feedback. Put it in the drawer and don't look at it for a day. Then go back and look at it with fresh eyes after you've had a shower and a glass of wine. And then you'll, you'll look at this afresh and, and you'll be able to mm -hmm. edit it in a, a, a cleaner, harsher way. Cut, 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 cut. Um, you're going to save yourself a season in hell. By, by planning ahead. And, and I, I hope that you, you all get great news and after you get your application acceptance, don't stop, make your appointment with Jenna or Monica to hear the, the panelists' comments and uh, we'll see you, hope we all meet, I hope we all meet mm -hmm. at the awards ceremony. Me too, thank you guys. Um, our last question was any regrets, but I feel like that's negative. So is there anything else you'd like to add that uh, you think would benefit or tips and things that we didn't touch on that you think would benefit these fine folks sitting here today? Unless you do have regrets, in which case I guess we can talk about them. <laughs> We've all regretted putting things off until yes. the last day. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, that's true. Um, one of the things I was just going to say that that's that, really, that deadline that they give you, that's not your real deadline. You're absolutely right. A week ahead of time because then you'll find that you still haven't finished but you have still five days left. That's right. And the recommendation letters, like she said, they get better with time. If they have a day to write the recommendation letter, it's not gonna be as glowing as they had two weeks to write Absolutely. it. So hit up everybody, even if you're still finalizing your project, it's still not clear in your head, these are people who know you, who are going to recommend you. They don't need to specifically put in the recommendation letter, I recommend this particular project. All they have to say is, I know so and so, and I know them as an artist, I've seen them, I've seen their work, they serve the community, you know what I'm saying? They have to give you a general recommendation. So don't wait till you finalize your ideas because mm -hmm. they can percolate and they can change as you do it, but hit up all your contacts. It says it takes a village, it takes a lot more than a village. It takes everybody you've known, but with all that input and creativity, it will help you form a clean, crisp application. That's what gets to the panelists. Write a lot, I write a lot when I sum up, and then I cut it down and get yes. to the basics and see what I absolutely must say. Mm -hmm. The rest is verbiage. Mm -hmm. So write it and then rewrite it and then shrink it. But make sure you don't lose your important points mm -hmm. when you're looking at the word limit. 
She's right, the word limit is a killer. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. You, as you get free thinking, you'll be like, ah, I'm over the word limit. Just rewrite it and tweak it. It's, it's worth the effort. Be Absolutely. merciless with yourself. Cut, cut, cut. Yeah. And, and computers freeze, printers jam, and I'm, I'm not poking, pointing the finger or anything, but do you remember the first year you went online? The system crashed. Yes. Oh, that, oh, it, happened. Right. yes. it happened. It happened. What year happened. was that, Jed? Was it uh, that, was, that was before I was grants administrator. But Save, I was that's right. You before you Save everything. Save it. Happens. Save it. I, yeah, in fact, my, quite, my note on that is I, I usually suggest to people to write your application in a Word document, and then all you have to do is go online and copy like, and paste. That's, yeah. yeah. that's, that's the safest way. Because yeah. we, don't, we don't run. It's run off a different server that's not connected to Staten Island. So keep a copy. Of so that, that being said, I'll give you to my grant application workshop. Save, save, save. Do it in a Word document. Save yourself a lot of trouble. And the uh, the advantage to doing that, or the additional advantage, is that you can keep a, a running tab on your character limits. Yes. So you'll know the mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Yes. I have a question about. I haven't applied for a grant for. I can't even tell you how many years. But uh, can you talk a little bit about the recent process of finding the right sponsor or organization to partner with, as, as part of the as application? officials? Uh, yeah. Oh, find, in other words, locating the right organization to, I guess, a sponsor? I Do you mean like called. a the venue? Well, no, I think what you're saying is, so we basically, yeah, so a, a, a conduit? Yeah, so a conduit. A conduit, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So okay. We, okay. Offer, we offer right. a multitude of programs. As first a time applicant, you have to apply for a DCA Premier Grant. You do not need a fiscal conduit or a DCA right. Premier Grant, okay? If you, once you get the DCA Premier Grant, then you graduate to the next two levels. We have two options for you. One is the Encore grant, that's NISCA Encore. That you either have to be a nonprofit or you can find a fiscal conduit. Or you can apply for the DCA Art Fund grant, in which case you do not need a nonprofit. Okay? Mm -hmm. And this uh, after this grant workshop, she actually lays that out for you. You need one, you don't need one, and we also have another option which is the NISCA Original Work Grant, which I can talk a little bit about after at, uh, in a bit. Um, so yeah, you, so for the fiscal <laughs> my suggestion with the fiscal conduit, if you would choose to go that route. Ideally, your fiscal conduit should be connected to the art that you're creating in some way. It's not a necessity, or maybe, or maybe you have a connection to the organization in some way, personally. Those are my suggestions because in the end, the money's going to them and they are fiscally responsible for you. Right. So my, my suggestion is if you want them to be responsive to you and be connected to your program and maybe even help you promote your program, have it connect to the art or have it be personally connected to you as an artist. Those are my suggestions. Sometimes working with a fiscal conduit is not the right route. I would make, I would, you can, of course, we're here to answer those questions, so if you have a question when you're outside of here and like you're confused about it or you don't know, we could, you know, t talk about that personally on one-on-one -on -one conversation. But those are my suggestions if you're looking for a fiscal conduit. Find someone that's connected to the art, find someone that's connected to you. Because you want them to care. Ultimately, the check will be cut to them. Right. There's a wrinkle though, isn't there, Jenna, that if, if, if you approach an organization that is applying for a, a, a that line grant themselves, right. and they're applying for the max, right. then they can't, they, their award would be reduced by what uh, the, 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 the organization for whom their conduit would, would be. That's so so they, they may not be able to be your conduit, or they take a hit of Most people know, it, most nonprofits, from my experience, know well in advance that they'll be applying for us just yeah. because they're not just more physically responsible, but they just have, they, they have to plan a little more ahead, sometimes an individual artist. So they already know if they're going to be applying for one of our grants. And if that's the case and they can't do it, again, come talk to us. We are connected to many nonprofits. And maybe you aren't aware of nonprofits that might be connected to you, your art in some way. So please, hit us up. Maybe, again, if you want to go that route, we're here to help in that situation. And if you're a performance uh, artist, churches where you might be having your, your, your concert, your performance, um, they, they'd be a fiscal conduit because they're 501c3s mm -hmm. um, and, and so on. Yep. Question. Uh, just mentally, yes. Uh, do you, I have two. Okay. Do you, can you apply as an individual, or do you have to apply as a company for the premier grant? You can apply as both. If either one, you can apply as an individual or as an organization, whichever you want to do. <clears throat> okay. And if you are a writer, what is your what kind of um, book can you submit? In Do you have to submit a video first? You don't have to submit it. You have options. So your work sample can either be a five-minute video a five minute piece of music, audio recording, um, or eight digital images, or if you're a writer, you can submit, I think it's five written pages, okay? That being said, 
if you're a playwright, sometimes submitting people performing the work is stronger than reading the actual play. But if it's not produced yet or hasn't been produced yet, then you'd be, you'd be submitting the writing sample. So that being said, literature is one of our understood disciplines, so submitting the writing sample isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's not bad, okay? It's not a negative thing. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay, so let's Irma and that gentleman in the back. Okay. Well, I just wanted to talk about the conduit. Also, the conduit or the fiscal sponsor or, or that you are applying through, sometimes also those organizations will take a percentage of your grant. So you also have to be aware of that. So if uh, that works for you, or did they take in too much, or they, or they might decide not to take any of your grant and just trust you, give you the money, and be responsible for your work you, you're producing. So it's just something to be aware of it. So, so as, as Jenna said, not necessarily has to be in the same doing in the arts, they could be a, a, a conduit that is working in health or something, but they're also interested in working with the community, then then if it works and they start an art and arts accepted, then it's fine. Mm -hmm. So I love what you said. The, the conduit does not have to be an art conduit. It could be a different kind of nonprofit that's interested in the work you're doing. Again, I do think that having some sort of connection personally just you want them to care enough to give you your money on time, enough to keep an eye on you to make sure that you're spending your money correctly, and you don't want it to be a tenuous relationship, you want it to be beneficial and helpful to everyone, okay? Do you have a question? Um, you were saying as far as applying as corporation or as an individual, mm -hmm. um, as an individual, is it more like applying for like a, uh, a bank loan? Or is it, nope. What are the requirements basically that would be like the underscore? Uh, that, that is a good question, but I go over that at the application yeah. workshop, so in, in depth. But, I mean, it, we're not looking at your financial statements, but you do have to submit a budget template. We provide the template, okay. you just have to fill out the numbers, oh. okay? And again, I will go over all that at the application workshop, which you'll have to attend. I'm not going to call my landlord. Like, no, 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 we do not, <laughs> we do not make calls. No, 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 it's not like playing for a bank loan at all. It's not, it's not fine at all. You are responsible, if you are awarded, to submit a final report okay. in which you have to submit receipts. So if we give you three grand, we want to see receipts for three grand. Okay. All right? Wow. I'm not going to call your mom about it. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's kind of an elementary question, but um, earlier we were discussing the, um, our work samples and also like our um, our project description. I was wondering if it's better to introduce yourself within that, just as a junior um, supplier, is it better to introduce yourself or to introduce the project or both mm -hmm. and where each should really be? They're separate, actually separate questions. There's a spot for artist bio or artist statement, and you can upload a resume and include a little artist bio, and then the project description is separate. Yep, two separate. Nope. No, separate questions. Separate questions. Because save the space for your project. Absolutely. I think one of the important things also of applying for a grant is to read the guidelines. Yeah. You read all the guidelines and then you go question by question and try to think about answering the question. Because it takes time. It mm -hmm. takes time and it takes years as well. So you, you keep reading the questions and actually they have been changed in time. And so you have to rethink again and then have to improve. And it takes time to improve. They have been doing it for years and I'm, I'm trying to get better. I maybe neglected some areas, but I'm trying to improve in those areas. So trying to think about all the different things that you can get better at. That's a really good point. Because <coughs> there's an initial question. Answer that question. Lead off with a simple sentence that answers that question. That's how directly. I do it too, Beth. Mm -hmm. every, yeah. every single time, like when I write something, I go back and I read the question. Does this apply to the question? Right. And, and I did that with my last application, and it was it was much more direct. I, that's the best advice. I keep going back. Does this answer the question? Does this speak to the question? Yeah, very good. And just to go off that from the other side, I was working with someone who. Um, from Siberia, uh, English totally not natural for her. Mm -hmm. And she came in, I wanted to do this project where she was making dolls. And uh, she's like, this is crazy. A hundred words, you think it's not enough? And she was just like, how do I fill it up? And I'm like, first of all, you don't have to fill it up. I mean, if you say what you need to say, mm -hmm. you don't have to fill it up. I mean, that's another way to look at it. But in her artist description, she was kind of freaking out about it. I'm like, talk about why you're an artist. And she started saying, I was typing everything she was saying as she was saying. It was like, I like to paint. My grandma told me how to paint. 
and this is how I paint, this is what I do. And it was, in panel feedback, was like, it was so easy to understand. It was like she was talking about herself. I mean, don't put emoticons and like, you know, it's not, <laughs> keep it, keep it keep like it full sentences and whatnot, but going back to like elementary ways of describing, it, it became really easy to understand what she was saying, even though English wasn't even her first language to kind of just talk about why she did what she did. It's funny, it's, funny, it's funny that you said that too, because I have an eight-year-old son, and when I do my applications, I make him read it. <laughs> yes, and that's a great idea. I said, Aiden, does this make sense to you? And he's like, yeah, Ma, you want to go do a dance with like people of Alzheimer's, and you know, they, then you're going to like make up dances about them. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because if he could get it, then like, yeah, like you know, that's what you want, you know. And, and just to give you guys an idea, there were 33 applicants in the premier category last year. Now, 33 applications. If you can imagine being a panelist, you have to read 33 that's applications over this, yeah, over and over the same application over. So again, that's why it has to be intriguing and clear because you don't want them asking questions about it because now they're tired and they're cranky and they're, now they're asking questions, I don't even know about your, you know, all that stuff. It's very important to be clear and concise and to the point. Um, and also with the work sample, you want to keep it interesting and, and up there. Because again, 33 applications, and some of you have sat on panels, can, 33 applications is a lot of applications. I want more applications in there. I want more people applying. But for panelists, it's hard, it's a hard job. So sit on a panel <laughs> if you're interested in it, please. It's kind of um, if you're submitting a grant, how is it not a conflict of interest to sit on the panel? You wouldn't be sitting on the same. On you wouldn't panel. be sitting on you that panel. On that for example, Larissa, Larissa applied for a grant and I think sat on a grant panel in the same year. Yes. But she sat on a different program's panel. Okay. The, 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 the process for all the panels are pretty much the same, give or take a few things. So you'll see what your application will be going through, but without looking at your own application. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Um, so, uh, regards to the premier grant, like when you say organization, it, it may not be a nonprofit. This might just be like an organization of identity. So, for instance, I don't know if this in fact happens, but so maybe Beth applied for um, a, a poetry reading in a public place, you know, for years one and two or one, and the next year she said, I think it should be called Staten Island Out Loud. Would she be eligible for the second year grant if uh, if she changed the name? She said, like with Beth the first year and the second year she changed. No, I think I think if you're creating it, it's the same or like say organization going through. I think we, it would be fine to apply. You could, for example, if you applied one year as an individual and then you just like you just said decided to <coughs> rename it something else, it's okay. You wouldn't have to reapply only because for the premier grant, you don't have to. You can apply. When I say organization, we don't ask for any paperwork. Like you can collectives artist collectives, people that are just a group of artists that are working together on a thing. To us, that counts as an organization because you're organized mm -hmm. as a group. Um, but if, let's say you get that grant, right? And let's say Joe let's say Joe applies for the ABC organization, right? And then next year, Joe leaves. He moves out of state. And the ABC organization wants to, re wants to apply for a grant again. As long as it's called the ABC organization, they can apply for the second year grant. Does that make sense? So if Joe, as an individual, wants to apply for the grant and then wants to rename himself for the second year, that's totally fine as well. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. We don't, we don't ask for fiscal paperwork or anything like that unless you're a nonprofit. Their goal is to incubate you. Yes. Mm -hmm. they, they try to make it easy. Okay. So yeah. can you if, you're, if you do a production, can you charge? Of course you want okay. Heck yes. Do you have a question in there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, out of 33. You put that in your budget. About sixteen. So about yeah. half. And again, we, nice you, we are you are not you are not for example, they are not required to fund you fully. So if you ask for three thousand dollars, it doesn't mean you're going to get three thousand dollars. That being said, our goal, again, I am the facilitator, so you are not allowed to get less than seven hundred and fifty dollars as a first time applicant, but as a facilitator, it's really part of my job to make sure that they are awarding you enough money to do your project. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So if you apply for three thousand dollars and you and you, for the, 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 in the panel they can hash out your budget. So you want to make sure those numbers add up and everything looks clear and concise. But if they try to award you not enough money, what's the? It's kind of a waste, right? Because now you're stressed out. You don't have enough money to do it. It, it becomes like this very stressful experience, which is what we don't want. 
So it's part of our job to make sure that they award you enough money to do the project, right? So maybe you get a no, but maybe it's because they couldn't award you enough money to do the project. So again, you're getting, if you get a no, come back and talk to us. It doesn't mean we hate you. Um, but again, they, they will, they're not required to give you the full amount. So plan ahead. I, my suggestion is always pl plan to do it for the least amount of money, but ask for the most amount. So when you get the least amount, it's still okay. <laughs> um, that's how I got my grant. <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 I was also a recipient before I started working for Staten Island Arts. I did a theater festival, which I was awarded for. So I aimed for 5,000 and I knew I could do it for like 200 bucks and they gave me the full 5,000. So right. <laughs> <laughs> well, people get paid. Yes. Are you still required to get a percentage of your budget from somewhere else? Yes. Yeah. As a returning applicant, yes. As a returning applicant, uh, when you get up to those higher categories, um, and even for our DCA Premier Grant, the grants are not supposed to fund the entirety of the project. Um, Carolyn, who's gotten grants from us before, will know for the NISCA grant, you have to come up, I think it's 40% uh, for the first time and then 60%. Can, uh, sorry, 60%. It can cover up to 60% the first time, but then it can only cover 40% the next, as you return to us. Okay, And our budget templates, calculate all that for you so you can actually see how much of our money is funding your project. For the Premier Grant, it's a little different. Um, it's not so much stressful as the NISCA Encore Grant, but for the DCA Premier Grant, we're not supposed to fund the whole project. You should be showing some sort of contribution or income coming from somewhere else. Now, you have to show some sort of income, that being said, it's selling CDs, it's selling your work, it's make, you know, and again, if you're having trouble coming up with income, we're here to help you with that too and figuring out how to make money. I mean, the problem, a, a major problem that we face every day or that we're trying to help is like, you're artists and it's a job and it's your job and we want to make it your job and we want to do it forever. Like, I don't want you to have a nine to five, I want you to be an artist, okay? So if you, you have to treat yourself like a business, so showing income is really important, okay? Uh, and I know it's really hard. I, I, as, a, as an artist myself, I don't know how to make money on my art, but I'm gonna try to help you do it. <laughs> it's easier to help somebody else do it, but you know what I mean? It's really important to look at yourself as a business sometimes and you want to show some sort of income. All right. Any other questions? Yes. Um, are you able to on the like are you able to submit two types of media? So what you're doing, say I wanted to submit a book but also an audio book, not make it all have to be, but you can like flip through it and listen as you flip through it. So yes and no. <laughs> uh, as a work sample, what you would hand me, you would give me the audio file. In the application, there's an optional upload area where you can optionally upload things. That's where I would upload your stuff. Technically, you cannot hand me written stuff and then the audio stuff, but there are ways around it so you can get the panelist information. So that's kind of how you would swing it. Yeah. Okay, that's just my next question. Um, how many applications can you put in for different projects? You can put in, as a, as a first time applicant, you can apply for the DCA Premier Grant and you can put in, I think, two, one app, so two applications, but they have to be separate? Yeah, right? separate, separate. So I'm just asking Monica, it's two. They can submit two applications, but it has to be for separate projects? Separate projects. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so you have to separate projects, and then you can. But as a, you can also apply for the original work grant, um, which I will talk about at the application workshop. Which the program, that actual program, has changed a little bit. It's really driven by working within a community and working with community and having community, the community, whatever community. It will, I will go into further at the application workshop. What the word community means, and how they are part of the creation process. Okay. That said, we did have somebody that applied for two grants one year and got it in separate categories yes. and regrets it in, entirely. Just because yeah, it's a lot of two projects at once. Two so. projects. Yes. 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 He, 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 he regrets it every day. He <laughs> yeah. 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 Remember, once you get the application, you have to do the project. Yes, right? Yeah. 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 It's a lot of work. My advice would be, especially if you're a premier, do one application, blow the socks off the panelists, Get that and do it well and follow up. And the most important tip is finish your final report. Yes. There are artists who get great projects, who get funded, and they don't do the nitty gritty, the details. Yeah. They don't file the final report. And as nice as Jenna is, mm -hmm. and she is very nice, yeah. she has to follow, you can apply for another grant. We will not give you more so money if you don't show us how you spent the money we gave you the first yeah. time. And after you do that well, I guarantee you one application per project. <laughs> yeah. At least for the first year. Because yeah. you still have to produce it. Yeah, as important as the project itself is, the administrative responsibilities are just yes. as important. You, you have, have to and, finish and that, it. Absolutely. That was, that was good that you said that, Raja. I hate that part because it's not the creative part, but you must but do you it. But you must do it. Yeah. This way it enables you to come up with more creative ideas and present your creativity. And that's how you want to look at it, but in that way. That's your, your reward for getting a project next year is to take care of these tasks. Get it done with so you're in good standing with the Arts Council.
You couldn't pay me to do two projects. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Don't do two. No, I, I you know. It's too much. Well, you, it's a lot. What you were saying about the original work, yep. right, right? Like, what if it, like, it kind of, like, coincides? Let's say, like, if my biography goes into what's going on with what I'm filming in the community, those two things might go together. Would that go into one grant or, like, the book slash the production? Uh, I mean, it's, to me, that sounds like two separate projects, and you might want to you might want to consider applying for the original work and for the DCA premiere grant. We're just sharing with you that someone did get awarded a DCA premiere grant and a, an original work grant that collided with the same project. It was basically a short film, and then the original work was it was a series of paintings that had to go that went along with the film, and it was just like so much work for him that he and on top of his own personal work and etc. It was just very stressful for him. So it's not a no, and it's not. I'm not telling you not to do it. Just sharing with you past experience talking. Um, and we'll talk. I'll talk more about the original work because those stipulations have changed. I've learned, we've learned new information has been revealed to us that we've been doing the program wrong. So we've, uh, it's changed a little bit, and it's really about inclu inclusivity with the community and having the community that you're working with, and you are allowed to delegate, designate the community that you're working with. There, it could be any kind of community, but you have to be really specific and explaining what that community is, but they are a part of creating the work that will be shown. Uh, so it's a little for, interesting. For which grant is that? This is for the original work, which I will For the original Yeah, work. the original work grant, which I will go over. So we are at time. If there are no more questions, I just have a few last minute things to go over with you guys. You guys good, feel good so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, so a couple of things. This was the first of four, right? So next time we meet is on the 30th, and that is for the pitch. So ideally, if you're going to show up to that meeting, which I really hope you all are, the pitch is, come to us with, this is what I want to do. You're going to stand up, you're going to say, this is what I want to do, this is my idea. And then Monica and I, and everyone in the room, are going to chat about it. We're going to talk about it and kind of go over how we feel about it. Is it direct? Does it make sense? Is it clear? And kind of give you some feedback on your pitch. That's the pitch meeting, okay? I don't have the date on me. Turn over here somewhere. Um, after that, the third one, which is, what? Oh, do you look at all the workshop we're doing, guys? On October 8th, we're going to go over... We ask our panelists to look at very specific things. Narrative and budget are two specific things we ask them to look at, and so that's what we're gonna go over in the third meeting. Your narrative, which is your project description, right? And your budget, which is our weird sheets of Excel files and all the numbers and how things add up and why you have to show income, and expenses minus income equal grant requests, and all the weird language. I hate math, you probably hate math too, and we're gonna go over the budget part, okay? And then the fourth one, which is October 16th, we're gonna go over the work sample, and we're gonna go over community component. All grantees are required to show, have some sort of community component. We're just gonna talk about what that is and how to involve the community and what a intriguing work sample and work, uh, work uh, sorry, public component would look like. We're gonna so show some sam actual work samples. We're gonna show some actual work samples. These are good, these are bad, don't do this, please do that, okay? So those are things that we're gonna go over. And by, so by the end of this four workshop series, you are gonna have a grant application yeah. pretty much. All right, so it's, if you, uh, I hope that you guys continue on with us, I hope, yes. The, uh, the 30th? Yeah. The date and the email says Thursday the 30th. Oh, it's definitely on the 30th. 30th okay. Yeah. I have Thursday the 30th. What's the actual day? Is it not Thursday the 30th? It might be Tuesday the 30th. It's Tuesday the 30th. That's okay. So it's Tuesday. The day is actually the 30th. <laughs> well, God, we're going to be sending out plenty of reminders about it. So it's definitely Tuesday the 30th is the next one of these. And where is that? That is at the Cultural Lounge, which is our new space inside the Staten Island Ferry Terminal, right across from the Subway Sandwich Shop. Um, and there we are going, exactly, we're going to be going over the pitch. So come with your idea. Give a month to think about your idea, okay? All of these are free? Uh, no, the next one is not free. It's $10 for members. Okay, so membership, wait. So memberships, <laughs> our workshops and libraries have to be free because it's a library and they're open to the public, but membership, for $45, uh, you become a member of Staten Island Arts, you get free access to all of our technical assistance workshops all year. So if you look at this pamphlet, it's full. There's four pages of workshops here, pretty much. You get to go for free. Otherwise, they're $10. So really, they're $10 each. So for $45, you're already making the deal. Become a member. There are other perks. You also get uh, invited to all of our gallery openings in the Staten Island Cultural Lounge, as well as some other things on here. I'm sure there's other things that we offer as members. But become a member. You get admission to all our workshops. You get one invitation to all our member events, which includes our gallery openings, um, and you get to vote on organizational issues that surround uh, the Staten Island Arts. So if you're, an, in, if you're an artist here, you get to vote on things that we have to and cannot do and can do. 
So please, get involved, become a member. I feel like if you plan on coming to more than one of these workshops, it's worth becoming a member. You can grab a brochure that pays for that here. Um, I have these which we'll hand around. These are uh, the application workshop listings and gives you more information about our programs. Please take one of these and pass them around. They'll be uh, their workshop surveys. We want to see, are you guys having a good time? Did you benefit from this? We hope you did. Um, and you can come grab some upcoming workshop stuff and the membership brochures. Again, my name is Jenna. That's Monica. Thank you, ladies, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, everybody. Have a nice